This is question 10 from the Cambridge International Maths Exams, June 2020. Paper 1-3. Beneath this video, you'll find in the description a link to an image of this question and the other questions in this paper, so you can try it before looking at my solution. The exam gives us these two points here, point A and this one here is B. And they tell us, they ask us to show that the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB is 3x plus 2y equals 11. Now that means we have to find that again. So you can sort of forget that. That's, that's just something for you to check your answer by. Now it's a really good idea to draw what they're asking us to do, especially for me as a teacher to show you what, what the question is if you're not sure. Now to draw two points, usually I just put two points and in this case that'll work, but I, I try to be a little careful. Minus seven would put over here um, and plus, three, um, plus five then would be over here. This is three and this is 11, so this should be higher. Something like this, uh, these two points will look like. A and B. But honestly, it doesn't really matter in this question um, if you look at it in the correct X, Y axis. You can just tilt your head to the side and it'll be fine. So what they're asking us for is the perpendicular bisector. The equation of the perpendicular bisector. Now what is that? Bisector, to bisect the line is just to find the middle point. And a perpendicular bisector is a line well, sorry, a bisector is a line that bisects the line, cuts it here. A perpendicular one, it just has a right angle here. So that's what they're looking for. Let's put in some points here. Minus 7, 3, 5, 11. And so first job to do is to find this middle point. There's an equation for that. It's the midpoint of two points. It's very easy to find. It's just the first number. Minus 7 plus 5, add them together and divide by 2 because we're halfway between here. So if we add these two numbers together, we get minus 2. And minus 2 divided by 2 is minus 1. So that's minus 1 there. Again, the middle point between the two y's, the middle point here, this is 3, this is 11, 4, 10, 5, 9, and so on. We just get the middle. The easier way to do that is add them together. We get uh, 3 plus 11 is 14. Half of 14 is 7. That is the middle point between these two points. That's half our job done. Next thing we need to find the equation of a line is a slope. We need a slope here. So to get that slope, we find the slope of this line. Because as most students tend to remember, to get the slope of a perpendicular, we turn it upside down and change the sign. I, I hate teaching that because you shouldn't have to remember something and um, you should understand where it comes from. It comes from the fact that two slopes multiplied uh, will give you minus one if they're perpendicular. But anyway, turn it upside down, change the sign will work for us. So let's find the slope of these two points. We get y2 minus y1, any way around you want. So we go 11 minus 3 is 8, 5 minus minus 7 is plus 12. This is the slope. M1, we'll call it. We'll call this guy M1 and this one M2. M1 is this. So therefore, M2 is equal to minus 12 over 8. Or we can, sorry, we can change this down. We'll change this one here. Divide both of them by 4, I think will work. Minus a 3 over 2. 4 goes into 12 3 times. 4 goes into 8. Two times. Or just divide them both by 2. 6 over 4. And then divide them both by 2. 3 over 2. Okay, so we have a slope and we have a point. The equation for a line is y minus y1 is equal to mx minus x1. Fill in everything we know here. We know what, well, we don't know y, but we want y in our answer. And equation of a line, it's y is in there. I'm looking at the answer there, sorry. And minus y1, this point's on the line, it's minus 7, equals the slope, well we know the slope, it's minus 3 over 2, x is x, and x1 is minus 1, so minus and minus 1. Now that, that's the equation of a line, we're finished, except it doesn't look like theirs, so let's make this, I'd never leave my answer looking like this, let's make theirs look a little neater. 
and we clean a lot of this up here. Let's see, y minus seven is equal minus three over two, let's go x plus one. I probably didn't need to write a whole line for that. y minus seven is equal, actually, you know what? Let's multiply everything by two first. I don't like this two here, so two y minus 14 is equal minus three x and minus three. Um, right, what's, how do they want it looking? Oh, all the, everything on the left, or all the x, the x and y's on the left, the numbers on the right, okay. Let's add three x to both sides, we get three x plus two y. This was already a two y, you remember? So we're just adding three x to that side. Equals, add 14 to both sides. 14 minus three is 11. And th that's exactly what they wanted. Good, we didn't make a mistake. That's, remember, when they tell you to show it, show that the answer is this. All they're doing is giving you help to check your answer. Don't try and use that in the question. It's just something you can check your answer by. If you need a hint in the middle of the question, it sometimes can be useful. But for the most part, it's just something to check your answer by. Okay, part B. Uh, the circle passes through AB um, and its center lies on this line. Right, this is a tricky question, especially if you don't know how to start it. You know what, let me rub this out here. I should have enough room if I rub this out. So you can pause the video, go back if you don't have this already. So that's fine. Um, yeah, this can be a tricky question. We have an equation for a, for a circle. I'll write that down. It's x minus h squared. We have a couple of equations, in fact. And um, plus y minus uh, k. I, I always forget what letters we use here doesn't really matter too much. So one way to do this is, they tell us A is on the circle. Actually, let me draw this first. Here's A and B. Um, it must be on the circle somewhere. It looks maybe like this, or maybe it's exactly the diameters, or um, maybe it's on the bottom. But either way, it touches the circle somewhere. That means we know two points that are on this. Now this is the wrong way. I'm about to tell you the wrong way, but it's something a lot of students might try. Um, you can put this point into this equation. But unfortunately, we'd still not know three things, H, K, and R. That's fine, we can put these two in. Still not know three things. So that's, um, with two equations, three unknowns. So we need something else. And they tell us something else. They tell us there's a line, um, and the center of the circle is line. So maybe the line, I don't know what it looks like. Maybe it looks like this. There's the center of the circle. So we could, you could try and use that information um, Put in anything for x, um, put in the corresponding number for y, it gets tricky. We'd have four unknowns, three equations, four unknowns. But honestly, I think two of them might cancel or something. I haven't done the question out like that. It's a mess though, and it would take you ages. You get lots of work to do. That's not how you do it. The trick to do this question is to use part A. There's a, there's a hint in part A. So if I draw this again, we have a circle, a bit bigger this time. In part A, they give us this. This is something you should be familiar of from uh, geometry. This is, we call this a chord. A line that's inside a circle, we call a chord. And a bisector of that line will always go through the center. The center's here, it'll always go through it. So that means this equation, oh, I broke out the answer. Let's see, uh, two, uh, let's check this, uh, 3x, apologies, uh, 3x plus 2y, 3x plus 2y is equal 11. This line here definitely goes through the center. And they help us out, they also tell us this other line, um, 12x minus 5y equals 70, that also goes through the center. Again, I don't know what it looks like, you could, you could work out what it looks like. But we'll just say it looks like uh, this maybe for now. That's all I need. I, have, I understand perfectly two lines that both go through the center. That's where they must bisect. Unless I guess they're, they're on top of each other, I guess. But they don't look like they're on top of each other. This ratio here is different than this ratio. So I don't think they're on top. I know they're not on top of each other. So we'll just find out where these two guys bisect. 3x plus 2y equals 11. That's just a simultaneous equation that you've been doing for many years at this stage. Uh, let's see, we'll multiply both of them, we'll multiply this by 
2 and we multiply this by 5, we get 24x minus 10y is equal 140. We get 15x plus 10y is equal to 55. Let's add them together. We we'll get 39. 39x is equal to 195. Check on the calculator. Uh, x is equal, well, 195 divided by 39. And luckily enough, on a calculator, that does come out even. It comes out to 5 times. You can probably see that, though, because 40 times 5 is 200. And this is 5 away from 200. Either way, that's x is equal to 5. Um, put x in, we get 15, 2y is equal, 2y is equal to 11 minus 15, so that's minus 4, y is equal to minus 2. This centre is 5 minus 2. So we, they asked us for the equation of a circle, we just found the centre, that's mostly everything we need, because we also know a couple of points out here, uh, 5, 11. So the center of the circle is 5 minus 2. Just need to find out the radius. Get the distance between these two points. That would be more work than you need to do. The distance between these two points. Because look at these two points. They both have 5. They're on top of each other. Here's 5, 11. Here's 5 minus 2. That means the distance between them. is just 11 minus, um, between 11 and minus 2, which is 13. The distance is fairly easy to see. But you can go ahead and use the equation if you want. The distance between these two is also 13. The distance between these two is also 13. That's everything we need. We have an equation here. X minus 5. The center. Squared plus Y minus minus 2. Minus minus a plus. Squared is equal to or squared. 13. 13 um, 1, 6, 9. And that's it. That's the answer to that question. Really good, tricky question. A lot of students, don't, don't beat yourself up if you couldn't do it. Um, you will see these things like this over the years if you, if you do exam paper after exam paper. Pretty tricky one, um, how to start it. But the trick was to look for this chord. Look for this chord, bisects it. And uh, that, that is something that you are taught for many years. Um, if you, to find the center of a circle with a ruler and a pen, you can put any line you want, any line you want, and then get a compass and bisect it. Bisect that and bisect that. This will give you the center of any circle. So that's something you probably learned from when you were quite young, and you might have forgotten it. But it is useful for some leaving cert maths or some secondary level maths. Okay, if you have any follow-up questions, leave, leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.